Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The history of Giza before the 4th dynasty pyramids were constructed is rarely discussed, and is often overlooked or completely disregarded. But, in my opinion, the origins of Giza is a subject that should be studied more widely. The problem is that very little archaeological research has been undertaken in the 20th and 21st centuries, which means that right now we really don't know as much as we should. There is archaeology, but the picture is unclear. Much of the research is buried in old books and papers, sometimes it hasn't even been published, and some excavations have been poorly documented. This line of study requires more investment, more research, more excavations and more publicity. Over the past few months, I've made a number of videos attempting to highlight some of the key sites of interest, archaeological discoveries that show a pre-Khufu history of Giza, discoveries that rarely get to see the light of day. In the Chroma Dump to the south of the pyramids, we have evidence for early dynastic and possibly pre-dynastic activity on the plateau, indicating that Giza was possibly a thriving town before it ever became a royal necropolis. Even further south we also have high status early dynastic tombs. Pre-dynastic Madiculture pottery has also been found at a number of locations across Giza and geological analysis by Colin Reader also indicates the Sphinx enclosure and the strip of bedrock that became the Khafre Causeway predate the pyramids. A pre-4th dynasty history of Giza is hard to study for obvious reasons. It's not just because of a lack of excavations and publications in the modern era, it's also because Khufu, Khafre and Menkore would have cleared vast amounts of pre-existing structures to make way for their funerary complexes. On top of that, we also have more activity at Giza in the 18th, 19th, 21st and 26th dynasties. The Greeks and the Romans were also at Giza. Due to the colossal size of the pyramids, Obviously, Giza would have always been a focal point for locals and outsiders ever since they were constructed. Therefore, finding evidence for activity before they were built is no easy task. But there is more to find, and I know exactly where we can look. It's thanks to some prospective and very much incomplete excavations that took place more than 100 years ago by the eminent archaeologist George A. Reisner, details of which were published by Peter de Manuelen in 2009. These excavations are little known, and so they rarely get the attention they deserve. If it was more widely known about, it's a discovery that would change the way we view the Giza Plateau. It is a missing piece of the story, and together with the other evidence just mentioned, there really is quite a compelling case for substantial activity on the plateau before the arrival of King Khufu. So, what did George Reisner discover? Well, there is a little known area of Giza called the Wadi Cemetery, and it's located to the north of the Western Cemetery, directly adjacent to Mastaba G2000, right next to the Great Pyramid. It was excavated in 1904, and it was found to be beneath an ancient dump. Early in Khufu's reign, sand, sediment and debris had been cleared from the neighbouring plateau to make way for the Western Cemetery, and it was all dumped right here. Therefore, the cemetery that was found beneath the dump must be without doubt pre-Khufu. The work is some of the most poorly published of all Reisner's excavations at Giza. A large number of photographs do exist, but there are no maps or plans, and only a short description was published in Reisner's book, History of the Giza Necropolis 1 in 1942. A summary article was also published in 1905 in a now defunct journal called Records of the Past. But in the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, and in the University of California, 
there is an unpublished excavation report. And thanks to the fantastic work of Diane Victoria Flores of the Giza Archive Project, we have now been able to learn a lot more. In early 1903, after being granted permission to excavate at Giza by the Egyptian antiquities director Gaston Maspero, Reisner sent his colleague Arthur Gruttenden to begin preliminary excavations in the Khufu Western Cemetery to try and establish the western edge of the site. By the end of the year, Reisner had finished his work at Naga Eddir and he arrived at Giza to lead the excavations. He wanted to establish a place north of the main western cemetery to dump his own excavation debris, and the ideal location was this wadi. Obviously, before any modern dumping could begin, he had to make sure he wasn't covering up any important archaeology. Therefore, a number of test excavations were dug into the wadi. North of the large Mastaba G2000 marked here, Reisner and his team of 150 men cleared an area measuring 40 by 30 metres and they discovered 77 ancient tombs. These were numbered GW1, 2, 3 and so on. Reisner took 243 photographs in total and after a month of work, he deemed the area sufficiently examined and then moved onto the main Khufu Western Cemetery. So, he did not spend a lot of time excavating the wadi, his reports were unpublished, and no plans or section drawings were made. And so, the interpretation of the archaeology in the wadi cemetery is still somewhat speculative. Unless new excavations do take place, we only have so much to work with. But that hasn't stopped Diane Victoria Flores, who has worked on this project for a long time. She reconstructed the photographic history of the Wadi Cemetery, and this has allowed for the creation of a sketch plan of the tombs, as shown here. She's gone through Reisner's photographs and reports, and now, for the first time in more than 100 years, we are starting to finally understand what was uncovered. Reisner dug a series of test pits at 10 metre intervals. Under 1.5 to 2 metres of sand, he found the tops of mud brick and undressed stone mastabas. Deeper excavations also found that at least one of the mastabas was built on top of an earlier mud brick structure, which, although hard to see, is apparently shown in this picture. This discovery led to wider excavations of the area, to better understand the archaeology. Due to exposure, the upper tombs had largely disintegrated, but it was certainly clear there were two distinct levels of mortuary architecture in the Wadi Cemetery. The older, lowermost layer consists of isolated, single burial, mud brick or fieldstone mastabas, plastered with mud and coated with pink lime plaster. These mastabas had two offering niches on their eastern sides, and in some cases, there was a low wall to the east of the offering niches, and this created a kind of courtyard. The level that was built on top showed larger mastabas, which had compound southern offering niches, as well as tombs with multiple burials, or mastabas huddled together as part of family complexes. As stated at the beginning of this video, the mastabas of the Wadi Cemetery were also covered by several ancient trash heaps. These dumps are in fact the most important feature because, according to Reisner, they look to represent the material that was removed from the Western Cemetery Plateau before or during the early reign of Khufu, in order to begin the construction of the neighbouring Great Mastaba G2000. This large mastaba belongs to an anonymous son of Khufu. So, like the Chroma Dump, we have yet more ancient trash heaps at Giza, this time on the northern edge of the plateau. In these dumps, Reisner notes there were three specific layers. Clean disturbed sand on top, 
Then, underneath a layer of decayed mud brick or plaster with limestone chips. And below that was a layer of sandy dirt. Reisner believed that this material came from the clearance of the plateau to build the Western Cemetery, meaning the lowest level of the dumps comes from the uppermost level of the plateau. So, first of all, the sandy dirt overburden was removed and dumped, then the remains of mud brick structures, which once occupied the plateau prior to Khufu's constructions, and finally the clean geological stratum from just above the plateau's bedrock formed the uppermost layer of the dump. The specific layering shows that this is not natural erosion in the wadi. The heaps do have clear stratification, with the order of layering consistent with the clearing of the land to the south of the Wadi Cemetery. So, all in all, there are two important features to remember. Firstly, we have the existence of the Wadi Cemetery with two levels of building, and both must have been created before the clearance of the land to build Khufu's Western Cemetery as the Wadi Cemetery is underneath an ancient trash heap. A trash heap that was made before the creation of Mastaba G2000. Secondly, buildings were cleared and dumped to make way for Khufu's Western Cemetery, because the middle layer of the dump material consists of decayed mud bricks or plaster with limestone chips. Evidence of buildings. Likely old Mastabas. If the trash heaps come from land clearance to build the enormous Mastaba G2000, which occupies an area roughly 100 by 45 metres, then it looks like this footprint may have already been filled with minor Mastabas when Khufu selected the area to build G2000 in the 4th dynasty. Reisner also noted there were still quite a few small pre-Old Kingdom mud brick and fieldstone mastabas on the plateau proper, and these had escaped the clearance. And although they're hard to make out, you can apparently see them in this picture from 1904. The tombs remained intact as they didn't obstruct any later construction plans, otherwise they too would have been removed and ended up as dismantled remains thrown northward over the already existing Wadi Cemetery below. Finds from the Wadi Cemetery are not high in number, because Reisner's excavations were relatively fast and not extensive. Nevertheless, he did find some important things, things that could tell us the age of the cemetery. For example, there were early Old Kingdom coarse beer jars. There was also this inscribed lintel, known as the Nebu lintel, and this looks to be pre-4th dynasty, as the sunken relief offering table in front of Nebu, as well as the hieroglyphs, are consistent with the artwork we see in the 3rd dynasty. The cubic seat also resembles those used by King Josa, as well as other private individuals, as seen in early dynastic artwork at Saqqara and Helwyn. Here are some examples of early dynastic cubic seats. The style of decoration on this lintel is certainly more in keeping with early dynastic to early Old Kingdom art compared to what we see later in the Old Kingdom. I'll go into the archaeology of the Wadi Cemetery in more detail in a forthcoming video, because although we don't know a lot, what we do have could well be some of the earliest archaeology of Giza, and I think it should be widely known about, much like the finds of the Cromer dump. As Carl Cromer and Mera Torsio Regillo have said in the past, and as George Reisner believed, there is evidence of pre Khufu activity at Giza. The first two researchers say there is evidence for a pre Khufu town at Giza whilst Reisner is showing evidence for a pre-Khufu cemetery. Conservatively, Reisner believed the cemetery could be late 3rd dynasty or early 4th dynasty, aka during Snefru's reign. But with little excavation and analysis undertaken, it could well be even older. Before Khufu, 
Reisner believed that Giza was occupied and already in use as a Memphite necropolis, but of secondary status to Saqqara, Maidum and Dashur, only rising to prominence when Khufu selected this site for his pyramid project. So now, evidence is suggesting that the Western Cemetery and the Wadi Cemetery should be added to the growing list of pre-Khufu archaeology at Giza. And this is significant, because as the evidence mounts up, it will soon be unquestionable that Giza was occupied by both the living and the dead long before any pyramid was built. More excavations are certainly required, and I just hope that archaeologists can one day re-examine this part of Giza, now once again buried by the sands of time. The Wadi Cemetery should be pretty much undisturbed, and what is waiting to be discovered could well change the history of Giza as we know it. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.